entering the waiting room. We'll just hold tight. No, I was in court and I just got out. But yeah, let's see. And then um, uh, I'll see you at the hearing. Okay. Oh, this is probably um, this cynic. It's for, yes. Okay. Um, I do see Ms. Uh, Winkles here. Uh, Mr. Su, I do see you present also, and I believe Mr. Anagnosto, you are also on this case. I am, Your Honor. Okay, and I did also just this morning receive or was handed, uh, I'm not sure when it was filed, but I was handed it this morning, the declaration of Devin Dittbrenner um, objecting to the guardianship. Does Do the other parties have that declaration? I haven't seen it, Your Honor. And I got that yesterday, Your Honor. Okay. So, um, I, Ms. Winkle's position is uh, a short continuance, so she and her client can review that and respond. I think that makes sense, um, especially since I just got it this morning as, as well. But, Mr. Su, I'll first go to you and then Mr. Anagnosto on any objection or response to a short set over. Well, uh, Your Honor, I think my client's position is we'd like to uh, proceed today, but uh, as a practical matter, I understand that uh, everybody needs a chance to respond, and, and it did. we did delay in getting it, the, our response to everybody. So uh, if it's a short set over or perhaps one week, that would be acceptable, I believe, to my client. Okay. And then Mr. Anagnosto. Uh, yes, I, I represent the uh, the father, Jeremy Murphy, and um, uh, he, yeah, it's kind of the same sentiments, uh, a, a short continuance, um, uh, if we could set it over to, to next week, um, but uh, we want this heard sooner than later. He wants some, um, uh, basically, his children return. It understood, and I think some of the issues raised in the declaration I guess, you know, do give the court some pause to, well, I guess it gives the court more reason to want to have this heard more quickly rather than delay it. So um, the unfortunate part, I, are we doing minor guardianship next week during judicial conference? Yeah, so our only trouble we're running into is we won't have this docket Tuesday because of judicial conference. We will have it Thursday. Um, I can look and see how many are on that docket. I won't be the judicial officer on Thursday. So um, we could look at putting you to Thursday the 21st or Tuesday the 26th. And either of those work for me, Your Honor. Um, Mr. They S. Both, go, yeah, go they both work for me. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, and I could do either. I, I assume my client would prefer Thursday just to have it heard sooner than later. Okay. Let me I concur. Yeah, let me check that docket quickly here just to make sure I'm not overburdening someone. How many are on that? Three. Okay. Let's go ahead and put you to Thursday, the 21st, then. Um, the question I have, and I'm coming back onto this docket after a couple weeks away. Where are we at? I wasn't I was trying to make sense of what immediate orders we have in place just through today's hearing even, if someone could fill me in. Yeah, I believe I did an order extending the immediate. I did send it around to the parties. I'm not sure if uh, we also sent it ex parte. I'm not sure if anybody signed that. I don't see it in Odyssey. Um, so I'm not sure where it went when it went to the court. Yeah, that, that was my question. I didn't see it online either, but I saw that the judicial officer did approve it. Um, um, I can go ahead and edit it um, in that it'll just be the date. And if I can just get it to your honor directly this morning, it's literally would just be one date and then it would be the same, just an order extending. Yeah, well, would that be okay, Mr. Anagnosto and Mr. Su? We'd just be extending it. Instead of through um, today's date, it's going to go through uh, the 21st, which will be the date of our next hearing, since it doesn't look like that got signed in my absence. Uh, that's fine with me, Your Honor. Yes, that's fine with me too, Your Honor. 
Okay. Um, so Ms. Winkles, yes, that would be great if you could circulate that with just with that change date, and then I'll make sure that gets filed with the clerk's office. No, Absolutely. It'll be to your honor. Your honor is a presentation. Wait. I believe that order has been entered. Um, uh, so okay. I'm not sure if, if that, uh, I'm looking for uh, the petitioning attorney and I don't see her. Okay. I did review that and saw that it was just on for presentation, but it was confusing to me because it had it on with you all in front of Ms. Baldwin at one o'clock today, but then also on my docket. And I don't see a signed order. Let me just check with the clerk. Do you see a signed order from the last hearing on this one? And I believe, Ms. Bliss, are you on this case as well? Yes, Your Honor, I do represent the youth. Uh, it was, I don't know. Can Your Honor hear me? Sorry, I'm at a conference in Tacoma and I'm not sure if you can hear me okay. Yes, I can. Go ahead. Perfect, perfect. Uh, it was my understanding that Ms. Gunnell, uh, the attorney for the petitioners, had circulated that order. All parties had signed it, and I don't know if there was an issue with her submission to the clerks, uh, but I know it at one point it didn't get signed by the court, and then she resubmitted it, uh, and I believe that was late last week. In review of Odyssey, I didn't see that it got entered. It may just be an issue with how she's submitting it um, or the like, but I do know that all of the parties, at least from my understanding, have signed off on that order. Okay, so let me do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strike it from today, but I will reach out to, I believe it was Commissioner Baldwin, just to verify that it is in the works. If there's some issue, um, I'll have our judicial assistant reach out to the parties um, to make sure this gets done. But uh, it sounds like maybe it's just lost somewhere in translation through the court system. And I'll try and track it down today after docket. That is correct, Your Honor. Thank you. And um, on Thank you. this one, I believe uh, Ms. Farr is present as well. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. And Ms. Powers, you're on this case as well. I am, Your Honor. Okay. My notes, uh, looking back when we were last together, I know we had appointed Ms. Farr because of some service issues on father. So we'll talk about that. And then um, I did get your declaration, Ms. Maddox. Um, and we'll talk about your request for the um, immediate emergency order um, after we talk about service. Your Honor, we still don't have service, so we are going to need to set this over to give a little additional time. Okay. And in um, Ms. Maddox, in your declaration, you're essentially asking the court to find that service just can't be done because he can't be located with any sort of due diligence. Uh, I've had several people trying to locate him besides what I've done with my daughter. Ms. Farr, do you have a position on that? I mean, this I don't know that we've exhausted all potential remedies, including eventual publication. We, we haven't exhausted all possibilities and I don't believe I've received that declaration. Okay. Ms. Maddox, can you get that over to Ms. Farr before our next hearing date? Yes. That would be great. Yeah, and Ms. Maddox, I, I want to be very clear here. I understand you are doing the very best you can. No one is faulting you for that. I know this is frustrating. I can only imagine being in your shoes trying to track someone down that you just probably don't even know where to start with. But the next step likely would be if truly we just don't know where this person is, it would likely be a publication issue. Um, I don't, I'm not going to at this time find that we've exhausted all remedies and that he can't be located with due diligence. So I'm going to give this more time um, for Ms. Farr to assist the court with. Okay. 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 Um, but I also want to turn to your request in your declaration for an immediate emergency order. And again, I'm not faulting you for any of this. This is, the statute's changed in the last couple of years. Everything is different. Different courts do it different ways. And I do see that some of the forms you have filled out are from King County. Um, so in Cowlitz County, what I would need from you to even consider an emergency order, because so what you filed is a minor guardianship petition. That is different from an emergency minor guardianship petition. There's actually a specific form. You can believe, get it from the clerk's office, but you can also go online to Office of Administrative Courts. There's an actual 
um, emergency minor guardianship form that you would file. And then you would have both an emergency minor guardianship petition going and your regular guardianship petition going. And that is typically how most cases progress. So that, that is not unusual. The emergency get motion gets you that order quickly, typically. The regular petition is what will work its way through the trial system. Okay. okay. And so I won't be granting that today. And I know that causes you some frustration and I understand, but if you just get the court, that emergency guardianship filed, then when we're back together next, we can talk about getting you an immediate order. Cause I know you want to do things like schooling and healthcare and that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm having a really hard time right now with her new counselor yeah. here in Calitz. Yeah. And they really yeah. Yeah, and it's not one of those cases where I would be doing it on my own motion just because she has been with you for six years at this point. So um, file that emergency motion with the court and then we can talk about it. And I think that's going to, obviously I'm not making promises because I haven't seen your motion, but I think that's going to get you where you want to go. Okay. Okay. I have a question. The fee oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. the schedule for the GLA. Um, I was wondering if the, um, the county could do that for the fees? What did we put into your order? Let me just pull it up real quick. Okay, we reserved that to the next hearing. Okay, um, so typically for county paid, we would be asking you questions about your income to see if you qualify for county pay. Um, what can you tell me about your monthly income? I get social security disability and okay. then I kind of from the state. That's, for nine okay. Years. That's fine. You would qualify then. So we, um, I will make a note that will allow county pay on this given your receipt of social security. Starts in 10 minutes. And then Ms. Let's set a date. Ms. Farr, any recommendations both on date and any other input on this case that I may uh -huh. have missed? Well, just that, um, I would say two, at least two weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just that, you know, I have been assigned to assist in this matter. And so it would be important for um, petitioner to talk to me about those, you know, the procedural things that she needs help with. And I'll be happy to help her with those things. Yeah. So Ms. Maddox, yeah, please use Ms. Barr as a resource for you know, the emergency petition questions you may have, as well as the service issues, is, which is her primary reason for being on at this stage. Um, I could do Tuesday, September 26th, or Tuesday, October 3rd, if there were two or three weeks, if there was a preference. Either is fine. fine. Either is fine. Let's do... Um, Kind of leaning towards giving you three weeks just so we can start talking hopefully at that point have the emergency petition in so let's set this to october 3rd tuesday october 3rd at 10 30. let me just jump into that good afternoon your honor josh good day here and good, good afternoon day. mr good day i did see jessica davis was here okay good morning ms davis thanks for joining us Hi. Okay. I'm just pulling up the file here. Um, Your Honor, I'm also appointed on this case. Thank you, Ms. Farr. Okay. And I know um, this was set on for review on August 29th, specifically to look at one, well, one of the main reasons was to look at the um, school issue, if there were any issues with school enrollment. Um, and it looks like perhaps the petitioner was not present that day. I was not the judicial officer. So they struck the matter, but I have subsequently received proof of enrollment uh, from the petitioner. Ms. Farr, did you receive that or is that something you're involved in at this point? I haven't received that, um, Your Honor. I was received my um, notice of appointment on August 28th. Okay. And um, I apologize, but I just haven't had time to even reach out to the parties yet. Okay. I, I, I know that Your Honor is aware that for the last six weeks, I was the only GAL or CV on the list. So I yes. have 
a lot of cases and I'm trying to get in touch at least to get all of them started. And this is one of them. Absolutely understood. Yeah, I uh, when I started this docket a few months back, I would ask, you know, well, who's the GAL? We should sign much like a family law case. And I quickly <laughs> came to realize it is always you, right? Now. Yeah. So I do appreciate your caseload and certainly understand. And this day uh, is back now, so things should even out a bit. But well, good. Okay. I do need a little bit of time to get in touch with the parties on this. Okay. And I think, uh, Mr. Gooday, we do have you appointed to Ms. Davis now, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I was just appointed and Ms. Davis made contact with me. So I just would want some more time to talk with her and get up to speed. Okay. So let's, we do have an immediate order in place um, through today. So my thought is to extend that. We can talk about the time period. We will keep the, um, my, my other immediate orders were that uh, Joshua is to have no unsupervised access to the minor. We will keep that in place. And then we're right now we have every other day phone visitation occurring between Jessica Davis and the minor. Is that something we want to discuss today or at our next hearing? And how is that going? I guess I should say. Um, I've been well, let, your, let your attorney speak oh. first. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. He may turn it over to you, but let him go first. No. Yeah, Your Honor, I was going to um, I didn't get into much detail with Ms. Davis about it yesterday, so I, I'm OK with her speaking on that. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Davis. Um, I, it's it's been it's been going fine. I mean, my son he's he has mental disabilities, so he only talks on the phone for like two minutes, you know, and says hi, love you, bye, you know, when can I see you, type thing. Um, but um, uh, I haven't seen him in so long. I just wish I could just see him. And my dad has been like messaging me, asking me to come pick up my stuff and to see him when he's put an order in for me not to. So I'm confused on that. And also one thing, one other thing, the school he enrolled him in is not the school that's appropriate for him for for, 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 for what he needs so um i see you there sir yes sir yes ma'am okay do you have a camera you can turn on uh i can't figure it i out. can't figure it out your honor <laughs> okay that's okay um so two questions for you. We will set a, a further date right now, but I do recall when we were last together, we talked about how this child potentially needed a specialty school. And I That's think good. we even identified the name of it, but I'm seeing he's just enrolled in your local public school, Columbia Honor, Heights Elementary. What can you tell me about that? Well, Your Honor, I had to start from the beginning and getting enrolled into the Longview School District. Okay. Now, Mrs. Mrs. Dr. Hinkle is the super, is the, um, psychologist for the school district. I have a meet I have a meeting with her at Quest Academy today at 1 30 to put Elliot start Elliot in the process of that. Okay. Uh, I have taken him to his dental appointment. He just had a doctor's appointment yesterday to get him back on his meds. And as far as uh, uh, the visit thing on the phone, your honor, that's not actually true. She's just been kept in contact with him just the, the, the last weekend more than any time since the last hearing. Okay. I'm not trying to keep my daughter from her son. I just want what's best for my grandson. Okay. Are you um, wanting at this point any sort of visitation where Ms. Davis comes to your house? Well, if uh, I if she wants to see, I have no objections to that, Your Honor. If but, you are present. Uh, yes, ma'am. I'd like to be present. Or, yeah, or yeah. her mother anyway. She, she's not getting along with me too well right now, Your Honor. Yeah, here's what I'm here's what I'm going to do. Let's do this. Ms. Davis, I am working towards a path where there will be visitation. I just right. need to have some input from other folks on this. I think Ms. Farr's input will be helpful when she talks to you all. Sometimes we require, you know, hair follicle testing or something, you know, before you're with kiddo just to make sure kiddo's safe. So yeah. this, is, this is all very standard stuff. So for now, I'm going to keep the phone visitation in place. Please keep that up, okay? Yeah. And then... When we come back next, um, we will review um, child's enrollment in the specialty school. So, sir, thank you for taking charge of that. I think that's really important. It's very important, Your Honor. Um, yeah. Ms. Farr, Ms. Farr and uh, Mr. Gooday, how much time would you like on this as far as me extending the emergency order? We've done uh, a little bit less than 30 days now on, from the original uh, uh, order. Your Honor, I would like until October 3rd. Okay. Does that work for you, Mr. Gooday? Yes, it does. Thank you. 
Okay. So what I'll do is I will extend the emergency order uh, as written with all the other um, immediate orders in place as far as visitation and the stipulations with no unsupervised contact with Joshua. That'll remain in place through our next hearing, which will be October 3rd at 1030, which is a Tuesday. Okay. Anything else we need on that matter? I would just like to say for mother and grandfather to please call me and we can get a time set up to have an interview. Your Honor. Okay. Yes, sir. I don't have, I don't have her number. Uh, I thought uh -huh. she was supposed to contact me the last I'm, hearing we had. I'm happy to give it to you right now. If okay. You and, and you're correct, grandfather. It, it is my job to contact you. But right now I'm really overloaded. So it'd be very helpful if you would reach out to me. I can do that. That's not a problem now that I have your number. Okay. All Ms. right. Davis, did you get that? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We will see the parties back October 3rd at 1030 and I'll get the immediate order extended through that date. Uh, Rivian okay. Alifonso all right. Thank you with all. us. Or do we have Hedson John Mark? Wait, we needed to talk about that. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. We will talk about that. So this is a petition to appoint a minor guardian. So, um, so they probably won't understand what I'm telling them. So, and there are some complicating factors here. So I think we will need to set it over and have a Chuki's interpreter present. Okay. Now the court can arrange that. So I, so that ethnic support council doesn't have to do it. We can do it unless you want to. No, that's fine. Okay. So if maybe I'll tell you. Yes. And then with your Chuki's interpreter, you can let them know the plan since we're not going to be able to get much done today. Okay. So a couple things first. Let's give them a new date. Let's do uh, the first, since we don't have this docket next week because of judicial conference, um, let's set them to September 26, Tuesday, September 26 at 1030. They can come into the courtroom again, even though it says Zoom only. Okay. With interpreters, this is much easier. Okay. Um, I will request a Chuki's interpreter. And then what I do want to let them know is that they have only filed a full minor guardianship petition. That does not give them any sort of emergency, immediate emergency order. So they may need to, dis if they're looking for an emergency order sooner than later, the petition they have filed will not get them that. I don't think it's an emergency. Okay. And we can, I can go back over that with the Chuki's interpreter okay. in two weeks. Okay. Um, so for now, there's no order in place um, because they filed that just full petition, not an emergency petition. So we'll just set this case over to September 26, 1030. I'll get a Chuki's interpreter and then I can explain that process better to them at that time. Okay, um, I just have a couple of questions. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, um, Rivian's husband, um, Hudson, he passed away, and um, his name is on the paperwork. Is yes. Is that okay, or do we need to? It is. What I'll tell them when they get the Chuki's interpreter is to file the death certificate um, with the courts. But I did see that he had signed the agreement to this. But we'll just need the death certificate. Do, do you have a death certificate? Yeah, I think, yeah, she told okay. me we had those. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Anything any, else? And then the other question, um, do we need to do any more paperwork before the 26th? Only if they want an emergency order. Okay. And that would be its own separate. It's actually what they filed is called a minor guardianship petition. If they wanted an emergency order, it's an emergency minor guardianship petition. So that would be the only thing that they would want to do before we come back and talk more. Okay. Okay. Do you have questions? Rivian, have any questions? No. Uh, she said, I, I have a question. Oh, she has a question? No, me. Oh, go ahead. Uh, 
is it okay uh, for me to leave the BIC at home at the next point? I mean, Oh, yeah. oh, so the question is, do they have to bring the baby or can the baby stay at home? Yes. If they have child care, ba yeah, baby can, does not need to be with them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be easier. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anything else? Um, and then is there going to be any kind of um, fee or anything that they're going to have to pay? It's a great question. Are there fees on the minor guardianship filings? I looked it up and it didn't, I don't think no, so. But I don't know. Okay. So it doesn't not, it does not sound like there would be any fees associated with the filing or anything like that. Okay. If, and when we get to the point where we're appointing, you know, guardian ad litems or court visitors, we'll inquire into their income to see if they can afford any of that cost. Otherwise it's at county expense. Okay. So at this time, no. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, we'll see you back in two weeks on September 26th. Um, I yes. see a okay. lot of Thank you, you present on this. Um, and I guess I'm first going to start with, I need only the folks who are actual parties right now. I'm guessing some of you were asked to log on as witnesses. We're not even close to calling witnesses in this case. There's a lot of procedural stuff that's got to happen first. So um, Brianna Muldoon. Um, as a parent, absolutely 100%. You need to stick around. Do we have Austin Christopher Nicholas? Uh, the father is in uh, incarcerated. Okay. Yeah. And one of my questions will be service on him. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then Cassandra Gail Redden. Yes. Okay. You are one of the petitioners along with Dustin Redden. Yes, I'm here, Your Honor. Okay, great. So I want the two of you to stick on. The rest of you, are you all asked to log on as witnesses in this case? Um, some of them are actually my uh, sponsors from my exchange recovery group. Uh, okay. So uh, I did ask them to log on okay. uh, on my behalf. So that's okay. I'm just going to put some of you in the waiting room while I talk about the procedural things in these case. Uh, we're not taking witness testimony today. We're not even at that point. Petition so has been filed and I appreciate Brianna, you being here. Have you received that petition? I actually have not your honor. Uh, okay. I found out just through uh, word of mouth that I had court today with you guys. Yeah. And I think the same thing, I don't, I wasn't able to see that um, Austin has been served either the, the father Sounds like if he is incarcerated, we know where we can serve him likely. Right. So that shouldn't be a huge issue, but it does need to happen before we can move forward in any meaningful way. Okay. Your Honor, uh, Austin has been served. Um, I, the paperwork has been turned into the courthouse. When did you turn that in? Last Thursday, well, Your Honor. Yep, I see it now. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Great. Well, you, that answered one of my questions. So Austin has been served and it looks like you served all of the documents that you filed in this case. So we'll take that off the list. Brianna, we do need to get you those same documents because you, uh, you know, as a parent have the right to meaningfully respond to this with your agreement or objection. You also um, can request to be represented in these proceedings. I'd probably <laughs> prefer to have you served first to see what the petition states. And then when we come back in short order, we'll talk about whether you want to be appointed counsel. Okay. Okay. Um, what is a way that you can be served? The easiest, you know, we can appoint a court visitor to help get you served. But since you're here, which I very much appreciate, if you're willing to allow uh, email service, great, or mail service, um, unless you, if you want personal service, then it would be incumbent on the petitioners to personally have a process server serve you. Uh, Email is fine. Okay. To uh, Cassandra, maybe I'll ask you, do you have the capabilities to get these documents into an email format and uh, emailed over to Brianna? Uh, we do. Uh, we did try to serve Brie three different times uh, before we served Austin, but she just went meet up with us. And at the time, we didn't know where she lived. Okay. So um, 
Brianna, I appreciate you agreeing to accept by email. I think that will speed this process along, which is best for all parties involved, including the child. What is an email uh, that Cassandra can serve these documents to you at? Uh, at it's iCloud.com. Okay, we have it. You've got it? Yep. I'm great. So um, let's have you go ahead and serve her. We're going to get you a new date. The soonest I can get you back is September 26. Anyway, just that's our next minor guardianship docket. So if you serve her today or tomorrow, Brianna, you get those documents. Um, well, let me how ask you file that. How do you file what the proof of service? Yeah, just uh, file with the court your email to her. Okay. Okay. Um, Brianna, do you think that you'll be requesting uh, an attorney to represent you? Um, I think I will be a re attorney to request me. I think I have you guys. Yeah. Okay, so I actually have my exchange recovery to uh, to uh, up help me in this case. You do have some help? Okay. Yeah. So I was going to start that process now just because it can take a little time. But if you, if you are going to handle it on your own for now, great with some assistance, it sounds like. That's fine. If you get these documents and we come back, I'm going to set you to September 26 at 1030. So okay. two weeks from today, when we come back at that date, if you've reviewed the documents and you feel you need or want to request an attorney at that point, I can inquire about your income and decide if you qualify for a county paid court appointed attorney. Okay. 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 Um, what I will do because there was an initial immediate order signed ex parte by a judge on September 5th, I will extend, I will issue a new order extending that immediate order just through September 26 at 1030. Okay. Um, I just want to double check since Brianna, I do have you here. It does include, and you haven't been served with it yet. So it really hasn't gone into effect, but um, it does include right now um, a request to have you stay away from the residence of Cassandra Redden. Um, Is, that that's fine. I just want to know if I'm allowed to have my son in the time because I do have um, a recovery house that um, Hope Haven. I that's where my mm -hmm. that was the biggest part of my um, stability problem, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I placed my son under the care at the time with Cassandra Reedon. Right. Um, and so I do have a stable spot to where I can have him. So um, I'm just hoping that I can still be able to take him at least, you know, for, you know, whatever the court feels is necessary. Yeah. So I do think, and I saw in the petition that I think the ultimate goal is to get initially supervised visitation in some form going. I'm going to wait until we can probably get a guardian ad litem to, to meet with all the parties and we can carefully craft that in everyone's best interest. For now, is there, remind me, how old is Austin? He's four, your honor. Four. Have there been any sort of phone visits or video visits? Uh, I video chat him uh, when uh, I video chat him um, and I, I have had my visits with him um, when I could within the last two years that that Cassandra uh, has been helping me with him, um, which I'm very blessed for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I do. I did try to take him within uh, just any time I could have a stable spot yeah. to go with him in the last two years. Okay. So I do try to keep up on my uh, talking to my son and seeing yeah. him this video, whether it's video visit on the phone or in person. Okay. So, and I'll turn to Cassandra just for now. And that's great. Uh, Ms. Muldoon, you're doing a great job. Um, do we want to put something formally in this new order that specifically does allow those video and phone visits? Are you comfortable with that? Do we want I'm sort of structure around when those occur? I'm not trying to keep her away from him. My biggest thing is getting him the help that he needs. He needs medical. He needs dental. Um, we have him on the waiting list for school. If there was a set schedule where, you know, she could video chat for this one time at this date. So that way Austin isn't waiting or asking every day when mom's going to call because sometimes Bree says she's going to come get him or she wants him and then doesn't, or she says she's going to call and she doesn't. So 
Bree, do you think, and I apologize for using your first name. Um, it's just easier sometimes. No, it's okay. but, uh, do you have a set, you know, date and time that, you know, every day at six o'clock or five o'clock or four o'clock or something that works for you? Uh, yeah, I do. I can, I can do whenever. Um, if, if not multiple, I would, I would like to try to, ha you know, have him too. Um, because I am in a stable home now that to where I can, uh, I'm in the um, mo mom and children's uh, uh, with Hope Haven. So uh, I am allowed to have my son there physically with me. And I, mm -hmm. I'm going through all the parenting classes that they're, they're providing okay. for me. And I would love to do it with him instead of without him. Okay. Cassandra, just in this temporary period before we finalize really what visitation looks like, what is your, it sounds like maybe he has had some in-person visits with mom. Are you comfortable with in-person visits at the facility with mom? I've never kept him away. When she asked for him, I've let her see him. Okay. Um, it just needs, it needs to be, I don't know. I'm more looking for her, making sure he's safe mm -hmm. because there's times he hasn't been. Mm -hmm. um, maybe start with like a phone visit, you know, not every day, but maybe every couple of days. Your Honor, there are staff at the housing that I'm at. There's a uh, staff 24-7 uh, in the house with me. Um, uh, so that is, there is that. Is there, and what's the name of the house that you gave me again? It's called Hope Haven. Uh, okay. Under re It's under the re exchange recovery housing. Okay. And then is one of those individuals there with you who might be able to just confirm yes. that yes. there would be supervised? Yeah. Do you want me to put her on? That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Hi. And what, what's your name? Kelly Phillips. Kelly Phillips. Okay. If we were to allow, um, and let's just say for this interim period, you know, one or two days a week, a couple hours um, where child could be with mom there, is there a guarantee that there could be a staff person supervising that visitation? Either at the house or we also have our like recovery center where people hang out. So we could, if she was able to have visitation, we could ensure that a staff member would be around her if that's what we really just want to unite families. So however we can best help that to make that work, um, we're all about it. Okay. Your Honor, she did just start that a couple of days ago. Okay. I kind of feel like it should be something as far as visitation a little bit down the road when she's shown that she is fully committed to her rehab. Mm -hmm. So you're saying she has had those in-person visits at Hope Haven already? No, no she, she just she just started the rehab a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, I just just started my recovery at Exchange um, Exchange Housing. Okay. Um, be unfortunately, you know, uh, yeah. I tried to do it on my own, uh, right. and I just I I realized that I need the help, and um, I and I you know I already put my son through so much as is. Um, I'm just trying to now make my course on my foundation, and I feel yeah. exchange has really been helping me just in the last week with yeah. that. So, so here's, here's what I'm going to do. I've kind of been going back and forth on how I'm going to do this just until our next hearing. First, I just want to say, you know, Ms. Muldoon, kudos to you for recognizing Thank that you. you need some help, that you're not doing it on your own and that you're doing this, you know, for eventually reunification with your child. Um, you're doing all the right things. I'm, I don't want to punish you for that, but I do think maybe for the next two weeks, having you focus on that recovery versus yeah. bringing in trying to balance supervised visitation right now makes sense. I yeah. will revisit this decision in two weeks when we come back here. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. And I will, I will hear from some folks about what safeguards are in place for safe visitation, because I do want to give that to you. Um, but just keep doing what you're doing for the next two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then let's do video I would like daily either video or phone chats with the chat. Yeah. This isn't a situation where I think that Ms. Muldoon would have um, inappropriate conversations with the child and at his age and probably what he's been through. I think some form of short daily contact with mom is important. So let's make sure we're doing either a daily video or a daily phone chat. Let's say up to he's four years old let's say up to 10 minutes. I think anything beyond that for a four-year-old probably doesn't 
do much. They're yeah, they often don't the thing. <laughs> as you know, probably won't even last 10 minutes to be honest. So um, every day, some form of video or phone is allowed um, with kiddo between mom and then we'll revisit in-person visitation. And then uh, Cassandra, your obligation before our next hearing is just to get those documents served on Brianna. I will. Um, can we make sure that we make the phone call at the same time, like in the evening? So that way it's all the same time and we know when it's coming. Um, even right now, I was wondering, will I be able to send him to preschool? Because we have put a deposit down and he is supposed to start today, but I was waiting to see how today went. Yeah, you you can because you'll have an order signed today that continues your authority to okay. do so through September 26, and then we'll revisit that. Okay. Uh, yeah, what time would work for the parties? I'm I think that's a great idea, and I'm happy to put in a time. About six six o'clock. Um, oh, yeah, wait, I, I I actually just start my IOP, so my IOP goes from four to seven. Oh, okay. um, so we can probably do it about three in the afternoon or sometime after seven. That'd be really helpful on my end. His daycare or not daycare, sorry. His um, preschool will be from 1230 to three. So maybe 715, 730. Okay, 730 will yeah. be good. Yeah. Okay. Is that enough time before bed and all that sort of stuff? You yeah, think? we start bed routine about eight. Okay. The bath and all the, you know, brushing our teeth, going to the bathroom, reading a book. Okay. Yep. Let's do um, 7.15 to 7.30 um, for the video chat or the phone call, you know, up to 10 minutes a day. And then we can uh, chat more in two weeks. Okay. 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 Anything else the parties need from me? Nope. Okay. I'll get that order filled out and signed. Um. Let's see if we have, I can have the judicial assistant email <coughs> copies to you. I have your email now, Ms. Muldoon. And then Cassandra, I think you put it on the original petition. I did. Uh, Cassandra, help me out with the last R. few letters. Correct, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll get that over to you as soon as I get filled out a little bit later today. Any questions for me? Um, otherwise, I'll bring folks back into the courtroom just to let them know they might want to log back in September 26th if we need testimony. I still think it might be a little early for that, but if they want to, they're welcome to. Um, and I can start that uh, the video chats tonight of, at 7.15. Does that work, Cassandra? Yeah, it does. Okay. I think that's great. Let me bring these other folks in and then we'll just end docket at that point. Okay. All right. I've let you folks back in. Um, we're not going to be taking further action on this case today, so we won't need any testimony. I'll let the parties reach back out to you um, if they believe that your testimony would be needed at the next hearing, which is September 26. Okay. Thank you everyone for your time. I will go ahead and end docket today. <laughs>